fats. Uh, good fats are butter, preferably saturated animal fats, which have been very demonized, which is butter, lard, tallow, ghee. Uh, I eat raw meats, and the raw meats come with their own fat, so mm. they have fat, see that, attached to it. And once you get over your initial ew factor, you'll actually find it very tasty. When you have the, the large pieces of fat like that mm -hmm. on meat, what do, you, what do you do with it? Because I chew, I chew, and I chew, and I chew, and I chew, and I chew it, oh, and I don't Oh, that's not get fat. anywhere. That's oh, that's not fat. fat. That's connective tissue. Okay. Give it to the dogs once you're done chewing, or put it in a broth. And what about um, fish skin? Oh, I love when fish skin. When it's raw, mm -hmm. it's the same thing. You just oh, chew the heck out of it. And right, right. Yeah, so salmon it. skin, so I yeah. Yeah. so I chip, break those rules. Salmon skin, I fry up in key. And it's the most amazing and delicious. Yeah, I'm always taking skin. off other people's plate if it's good salmon. Oh, <laughs> and they're like wow. peeling it off. And I'm like, oh, oh, can yeah. I have that? <laughs> but if you if you feel it was so clean, you should not have it. So rich and huh? C H I A. Is A chia? No, not chia. Oh, sorry, G, 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 G H E E. That's rendered. So you take this butter and you simmer it on very low heat. You simmer it on very low heat. G H E E. Sorry. Yeah, you buy it. It's also called perfect. Yeah, you can make it. It's very easy. You buy it for like twenty bucks a pound. You can make it for six bucks a pound. You know, so there's a big difference. Just take the butter, put it on a very very light simmer, and carry on boiling it until the proteins fall off, and then strain it, and use that for your cooking. This is your ghee. blood pressure will drop. Oh, there you go, yeah. This is ghee, but it has some lime juice in it. Yeah, you can taste it a little bit. Liquidy. I can see that. Yeah, this is so good. You can taste yeah. it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. And you put some lemon. Lime. Lime. I had a lime handy, so. And and <laughs> what? No refined foods. It's great. Any butter. Any butter. Any butter. butter. Good butter. Good Organic. Butter, preferably oh, without okay. pesticides, because you know butter. To concentrates toxic stuff as well. Fats. So if it's bad butter, the good fats collect all the herbicides and pesticides. So you want good marine butter, good marine butter, good organic marine butter. Strauss, Strauss has really good butter. And you can get it at the farmer's market, much more, about $3 less than what you get at the grocery store. And if you join our butter run, it's six fifty a pound for organic, but Jersey. That's, until next year. that's until not until next year. We just missed it. We just missed it. Organic Jersey pure gold raw butter. You're not gonna get that anywhere else for love or for money. Okay. To join the butter run, um, and that's and I started that for exactly this reason where people would say you keep telling us to eat all these things and either they're unaffordable or we can't find them, and so butter runs are important things to be part of. Um, unrefined foods means that essentially you're making your own food and every person who comes here whether they make elaborate dishes like Marlene or whether they do really simple things cooks from scratch if you cook from scratch you will live a long healthy life because you know what you're putting into it you know you're not putting MSG into it and other junk um, and so 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 it's very scary for a lot of people to cook and the thought of putting things together or fermenting things. But I just want to tell you, it's as simple as picking up some raw butter, taking a bite of it, taking a hunk of meat, leaving it in your refrigerator, taking, slicing it up and eating it, eating three raw eggs, getting a half gallon of milk and just chugging it down, you know, or raw cheese. So. It can be fast food. It can be very, very fast food for busy people. If you're on the road, you can eat this way too. But the key here is no refined food. You know, McDonald's and all these other things, the buns and the pink slime. You wanna, because they'll always tell you and it'll always start good and then it'll go worse and worse and worse. And you don't know until 20 years later. Nutrition bars are the worst. The worst, they're the very worst. They're made from industrial garbage, the nutrition bars, yeah. So what they do is they'll take the soy, you know when they make soy oil? They'll take the soy cake. Then when they make orange juice, they'll take, take the orange pulp. 
if they take other seed oils, they'll take the pulp and call it protein. Uh, if when, uh, when they make Greek yogurt, they'll take the whey and evaporate it and spray dry it and make it very a very toxic industrial product, wow. which is not the way you would make it home because you're not heating it and putting it through three miles of pipe and cleaning it with chemicals. So no refined foods. Nutrient density. Nutrient density means if an egg has 700 micrograms of, say, phosphorus instead of a factory egg, which has 30 micrograms, you buy the 700 micrograms. Because egg for egg, you're getting, you know, several times, anywhere from 20 to hundreds of times more nutrient density. So they might look the same, they might squawk the same, they might, you know, taste similar, but there's a vast difference between uh, foods that have nutrient density. Well, an, an example that's close to home to me, because it's something I particularly enjoy, is the difference between a tomato in December oh. and a tomato from the farmer's market in the middle of summer. I bought some the other day. Delicious. Uh -huh. yeah. I mean, if you've ever really had delicious. a tomato in December that you... It's hard that, yeah. that hardly has any red to it at all, and is just mealy and tasteless, and I mean, they look, they can look pretty much the same. But they're sweetness. not the same, and you know that the second you put it into the yeah. <laughs> sweetness. Is yeah. Yeah. And yeah. the problem, yeah, the problem is restaurant menus. They have to be consistent, regardless of whether that food is in season or not. They're going to have a, a tomato on their hamburger. They're going to have okay. a tomato on their hamburger in December, too. Exactly. And so you don't want to eat that way. And that means literally eating in season, eating from your season. market when the food is actually made or harvested and not made hydroponically. So pay for the quality. You will not pay for chemotherapy and radiation. <laughs> There's no, I mean, short of going to the farmer's market and asking and knowing your farmers per se, um, there's no way of knowing something's grown hydroponically. You can ask them. So short of asking. So short of asking. Yeah, yes. I mean, but in a market you can't. Oh, I do. Yeah. That yeah. walnut man grows things hydroponically. At the corner, there's a man who sells these shelled walnuts. He also sells tomatoes and all that, and he grows them. And I asked him, how do you grow them? You can you can, and you should. And if the farmer does not look healthy to you, there's a problem. <laughs> or if his cat looks mangy, they're doing something wrong on the farm. Because farm animals should be really healthy if the soil is not poisoned. Round up and ready. So you should not grow your own vegetables? Oh, you should. You yes. Should. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, Absolutely. that's what I'm trying. Oh, you are. Have Absolutely. you grown vegetables before? No, never. Okay. But it's fun. It's wonderful. It fun. See, to yeah. watch those. Back to the tomatoes. tomatoes. Yes. <laughs> those, the, the Back tomatoes. to those tomatoes. Yes. yes. They grow beautifully in Marin. Tomatoes in Marin. Oh, our house. Remember how many tomatoes? One plant, we must have had, uh, you know, 60 to 100 pound of tomatoes out of that. Thing. If you just feed it your kitchen compost, oh, they love it. Just bury your compost under your tomatoes and you will reap. When you first planted or while it's growing too? Uh, when, while it's growing too or when you first planted. You just, you just dump out, you know, even if it's partially done, I dump it, cover it up with soil and mulch and uh, they love it. They'll grow forever. They'll turn into monsters. Start doing that. Yeah. Um, and if you have a need to know the sources of nutrient dense foods, talk to your local Destiny Price chapter leaders. We have Karen here, Lisa Monroe up in Sonoma, and all these fantastic women and men who have sources. We have a couple of men. I'm just saying noises a bit much. Yeah, I'll send those um, every diet in every civilization over time has contained some animal foods. Don't shun animal foods. Um, you get iron in plants and you get iron from red meat. The iron from red meat is many, many times more bioavailable than the iron from plants. And so especially children, pregnant and lactating women, you want to, um, or if you have any kind of anemia, you want to eat good red meat. Women tend to not. Women tend to be told it's better to be vegan, better not to eat red meats, better not to eat fats for your figure. 
uh, let me tell you, the women who eat the most fat are the healthiest, are the slimmest, are the have the least heart disease because fat is a macronutrient that you really need. So don't shun fats, don't shun good meats, but make sure they're grass fed. Is heavy iron only available in the meat? Is it available in dairy and egg? No, only in meat. Anything that only looks red, red contains heavy iron. No. Yes. yes, that's a problem. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. With my daughter. Can you not make, you know, meatballs or... Oh, no, she doesn't want to eat meat at all. She wants to be vegetarian, but she will eat cheese and she will eat eggs under duress if I... If I High flavor of them enough. Oh, you can get the best <laughs> eggs from the farmers, and they will have a lot more iron than the regular store eggs. So, I guess there's, and if you, if she likes vegetables, just saute them in lard or butter, and she will, it'll, be, it, it'll make it, the iron much more assimilable in the kale and spinach. Does she like green vegetables? Yeah, she's gotten much better about eating vegetables. Awesome. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> um, so every diet contains some animal foods. Uh, you can live without animal foods for a month, two months, maybe seven months. <laughs> Look wonderful. Uh, it's but it's stylized. Uh, yeah. yeah. Actually, can we turn them off? The sure, sure. Yeah. <laughs> or at least one of them. At least one of them. I mean, just like one too many. I don't know that you need. <coughs> perfect. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's, yeah. Good. That's, That's good. That's perfect. That's good. That's good. That's yeah. good. So right for you. So pick your animal foods whether and eat them as undercooked as possible. Let me assure you, you're not going to die from eating raw meats or raw butter or raw milk or raw cheese. It's all good. It's all good. If you need to, um, Sylvia, if you need to get in touch with farmers or stores, just talk to one of us. Some raw animal is consumed, raw animal food is consumed raw. Reason being, it contains the vitamins that are only found in animal foods. Some of the proteins that are easily destroyed by heat. So uh, some, every culture has some raw animal foods that are consumed raw. And that's what keeps them going. Whether it's raw cream or raw yogurt or you raw, know, milk. raw milk. <laughs> um, and, and, and that is sacred food. It is considered to be, they would save it up poor family would, would save it up for their pregnant moms and lactating moms and their elderly or the sick. Um, it's very important. High levels of enzymes and beneficial bacteria. And we're going to talk about nothing but bacteria today until you're bored. <laughs> but it's a reminder to eat fermented foods. Who eats fermented foods and what will start with you? I, to be honest with you, I only eat my most is kombucha and I buy it um, Good yogurt. That's very good. No sugar, no, I Perfect. don't buy anything with anything included in it. Perfect. I need to um, up that. I've been talking about this that this week that I need to get like a kimchi or a sauerkraut. Yes, yes. I mean, it's just, you know, sometimes it's... So I'd recommend four different ferments per day, and even small amounts will do. And, oh, I didn't There's some them. fermented food. If anyone wants to smell this or take a taste of this. I have a taste of something. Yeah. She makes awesome well, ferments. Well, <laughs> it's not my usual, but um, it was a sauerkraut I had that was really nice, raw, and I added cucumbers and some other things to it. You're welcome to. I, I need another class. I'm a bit like weary of like, am I making a mold? I, I will start something? doing classes soon. Because yeah. I think that that's yeah. the first time I met you was doing that. Yeah. <laughs> you were talking about your gut. At that time you had recovered from something or yeah. you were yeah. recovering yeah. from something. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. If I, I don't trust myself with ferments just in case I, you know. Well, we've been taught to be afraid of everything that... Well, you know, yeah, everything especially is wrong. Wrong. Yeah. And it's like, is it going to be fermented or not? It's not just yeah. radiated. Mm -hmm. um, Renee, we talk about the ferments you eat. Basically, it's the sauerkraut that I use. The others I haven't. I've done the kombucha, and it has still has sugar in it, and it's not quite right. Okay. So you do sauerkraut. That's pretty so, good. Yeah. Sylvia, do you eat any ferments? Very seldom, but I... Came, I went back with pickles. Oh, so pickles. pickles are low. Yes, yes. And I know how to ferment them, so I'm, I'm going to rehearse mm -hmm. that recipe mm -hmm. and start eating fermented. And you eat big pickles lacto fermented, right? They're not vinegar pickles, but with salt water in them. 
with salt water. Perfect. But they do take a spoon of vinegar. You can add a spoon of vinegar so long as you add salt to it salt. and it has bacterial ferments. Yes. So the sourness, uh, so, so long as there's a bacterium in it or a bacterial culture, that's what you're shooting for. And your cortito, you may have eaten cortito in Mexico. Or what is cortito? Cortito is fermented cabbage with hot peppers in it, and it's mm. absolutely delicious. Mm. Okay. Yes. Actually, so curtido. What the yes. pronunciation? Curtido. Oh, is it curtido? Curtido. Oh, yeah, there. Oh, I was curtido. wrong. Curtido. <laughs> so do you eat curtido? Yes. Oh, okay. Like, like they do, like, uh, marvelous uh, carrots. Mm -hmm. Curtidas. Okay. And peppers. And curtido. Yeah. Yeah. The best. The best. The best. The best. The best. Yes. Mm -hmm. But don't use the industrial one, which is made no. with vinegar, but... The lacto fermented, which has bacteria. Trader Joe's has a cortido. Cor oh, cortido. 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 <laughs> and um, it, it's from a Sonoma place. Uh, wow. They have a they have a, both a sauerkraut and then they have a cortido. They did. I haven't gotten any for a long time because okay. I'm making my own. But uh -huh. name a few more Mexican ferments. I know there are lots and lots. Well, they have the chiles, so uh -huh. the peppers, mm, peppers, peppers, and the uh, Onions. Oh, I love those. Yeah. yeah. Even the small ones, like oh. the, the, the pearl onions. Yes. Yes. The pearl onions. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That's what I Queso think. fresco. Queso no fresco. fresco. Mm. Yes, yes. I like cheese. Mm. Okay. Queso fresco is something that you can make yourself. Yes, yes. From Ronald. Well, my, my grandmother used to do That's why I remember from milk, but that was real milk. Yes. Farm milk. Farm milk. You know, like she used to boil it mm -hmm. and come to a boil and then let it stand until it was uh, heated all. And then she, uh, I mean, she would put a cloth on top and let it stand. Let it stand through days or something like that until you could put it into a... The curd separated. Yeah, separated. And then you have the cheese in a small, very small yeah. bag, like a... a textile bag mm -hmm. that would drain the water and you hang it from somewhere mm -hmm. and then you have the cheese. Yeah. So all you have to do is not skip the boiling part. Yeah. Just get the raw milk, leave it on the counter, it turns into beautiful cheese. It's a clapper, it clappers, so you can eat it even before it's a cheese if you want, you know, it, it gets kind of solid. Uh -huh. Wow, okay. So use raw milk. Raw that's milk it. and make your own queso fresco. So so what, are, what other Mexican ferments? No, that's more or less. I mean, oh, those are awesome. Attention. Those are delicious. They will save your life. They will save your life. They will give you every vitamin on demand, the bugs in your gut. And that is the, the beauty of having good gut bacteria. You don't need to take vitamins from the oh. antibiotics. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And the probiotic pills don't work. They don't work. They don't repopulate your gut with a variety and diversity of gut bacteria. Um, they did this experiment in post-op, post-surgery patients, two sets of patients. One set, they did nothing. They gave them a course of antibiotics, both. And one set, they gave them no probiotics. One set, they gave them probiotics. The ones without the probiotics uh, actually got their original gut flora and fauna better and faster, whereas the ones that were given probiotics on a barren stomach were not able to develop a variety and diversity of bacteria. Really? Yes. Wow. <clears throat> so this whole thing about probiotics, take it with a pinch of salt. Yeah. Now, if you have... Uh, yeah. Sea salt. <laughs> sea salt. Yeah, yeah. take it with a pinch of salt. we some. Kefir grains. Kefir grains. Yeah. And she said, what's it, what's it, what's it, what's it, wash them, drain them, and put it uh, with real milk. Yes, yes. And, and let it stand. Yes. That's what she told me. That's what I did. So I, I have a few zips of that. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, and it, it's really good. But that's you're already yeah. eating. You're already yeah. halfway there. Halfway. <laughs> Three quarters of the way. <laughs> yeah. 60 years. That's better than 98. Percent. Yeah, percent of the population. <laughs> so halfway <laughs> there is huge. Pretty good. And once you make the kefir, you uh -huh. know, remove the grains, yeah. you can also let it sit a bit on the counter and make cheese out of it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Which so is so very good. The, 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 the kefir, 
keep it on the counter and let it become cheese. It'll clabber. You pull out the grains and then make cheese out of the. It's called the lebanon. It's it's yeah. And you can take that cheese, put it in a in some oil, uh, olive oil. Put put uh, nice mm, spices nice. in the cheese. Mm. Rosemary and dill. It's pretty delicious. In the Middle East or the Eastern Europe, it's eaten a lot. Oh, and talk about the cauliflower, the kanji. Oh, and kanji. You can make for people who have insulin resistance or who don't need sugar in their ferments. Take cauliflower, and exactly like you would make. Um, Beet kvass. You just take one third cauliflower, two thirds water. Add mustard, ginger, uh, peppers, some carrots to it, and in ten days it'll turn into an amazing ferment. So ferments are critical. Ferments are critical. And that they give you high levels of enzymes and beneficial bacteria. So you're not putting a lot. You know, you find so many women and children, men too. With digestive difficulties, they can't eat this, that, and the other. They get stomach bloating. That's because their pancreas are shot from trying to produce enzymes for these cooked foods, which don't contain enzymes. But if you use bacterial ferments and raw foods, the they provide the enzymes that you need to digest it. So the, the this meat, for instance, this meat has the proteases and lipases that are needed to digest it. So anyone who cannot digest a lump of cooked meat will be able to digest this like air. It's like you've not eaten. I could eat two pounds of this meat, but I could not eat four ounces of cooked meat. That's why, literally, they can get away with on here, this little sticker. What does it say? No lactose intolerance naturally. Because of <laughs> raw milk, it has the enzymes. You don't. Yes. It, you yes. can digest it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. okay. So high levels of enzymes and beneficial bacteria. And this is this applies to every disease, every age group, moms and children and grandchildren and nieces and nephews and men and women and your dogs too. I feed my dogs raw food and they have fried and. No drugs, no nothing. They don't have tick infestations anymore. Mm -hmm. Their vaccine site tumors are disappearing. Their coats are shiny. They never get sick. The the eleven year old who was uh, getting on, she was get, she was having apps and seizures, and her mm -hmm. legs were getting um, wobbly. You could see that she had paralysis. She runs like the wind now, mm -hmm. and so dogs with raw foods. With raw foods. Anytime you eat any kind of grains and seeds, please soak, ferment, preferably with some acid medium to remove the phytates and the lectins from around the seed coat. So if you eat bread, eat sourdough levand bread. Do not eat the three-hour factory fermented yeasted breads because they are hard to digest. If you make oats, soak them the night before. If you, you know, make farina, whatever it is, soak it the night before so that it's easily digestible. Mm -hmm. Masa is a soaked and fermented corn, which is why it's God's food. So, um, I've been trying to do that with my my husband, and my daughter are very into wheat products. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I've been trying to, like, if I'm going to make popovers or pancakes, um, to put raw milk into the flour the night before to let it sit overnight. <clears throat> My question is, with something like pancakes, um, where you're adding leavening, where you're adding baking soda or, mm -hmm. or, or even... Well, no, with buttermilk. You can add buttermilk. It, it, uh, how do I add in the leavening at the end? It's kind of like, a, I'm messing with the recipe and the order of the recipe, so I'm changing the chemistry right, because right. I'm trying to get, because I'm trying to soak the flour. Mm -hmm. um, Serve it with raw cultured butter. Loads and loads of bacteria. Loads of light pieces. Add buttermilk. Some of that will remain. eat raw butter. They want to okay. How about adding buttermilk to the pancake mix? And yeah, it'll warm, but there'll be some sourness. It'll be easier to digest than straight straight pancake with milk in it. Processing. When you say soak uh, all the grains, 
Brandon seeds in yeah. seeds, uh, like not like the uh, what are those that I eat a lot? Um, chia. No, chia, almonds. Uh, soak, soak, soak. Soak, soak, soak. soak, soak. soak. Yeah. Almonds, walnuts, peanuts, chia. Soak them overnight. Soak. I soak my almonds and walnuts for two, three days in salted water, and then I dehydrate them. And they're so delicious that my family will attack them at, at three times the speed they would normal raw almonds or walnuts. They're very delicious and very nutritious. How much salt do you put in? Uh, sea salt. How sea much? Salt. Like I put in more because it's going into the almonds. So I'll put three or four tablespoons into a big so, soaked almonds. There's no problem just you know taking some almonds soaking them for the day or two, right? Mm -hmm. You don't have to dehydrate them. You can just oh, eat them right. straight. Yeah, yeah. So Even just better. know that you don't have to dehydrate yes. them. Yes. So skip that step. I don't know how to dehydrate. I, 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 I do it by putting it in the oven at 100 degrees oh. or thereabouts, but you don't have to. That's, so that's to dry them out, to dry yeah. them out. Oh, but, okay. But you can eat them just, you know, wet. Very good point. They're delicious wet. Yeah, because some people don't do it because they it's too much. It's work. too much work to dehydrate. Yeah. yeah. So that goes for almonds and for every nut, else. every raw nut. Soak it yeah. with salt and just soak it in salt water. Yeah. Eat and then it. eat it three days later. You can stick it in the fridge and you can eat a handful. They're way more digestible. Well, so you've, you've probably done that with beans. Yes. yes. Yeah. But I throw away the water. Or mm -hmm. I cook yeah. it in the mm -hmm. water. Yeah it's, yeah, it's basically the same thing. It's the same thing. But you throw away the water. You throw away the water. For the nuts. Yeah, for yeah. the nuts. Yeah. Because yeah. 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 what, do what you're doing is making food more assimilable. It's not enough to eat food. The point is to digest it. And if you don't digest it, then you didn't get the food. And processed food is largely indigestible food. So, like my rice cake. Oh yes, oh, very yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Okay. But there are things you can eat that are very fast, very accessible. Just eat three raw eggs. You know. How easy is that? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, as long as they break mentally, them, yeah, that them. mental yeah, that's, yes. that's key. And you can I mean you don't have to have them just plain. You know, we sometimes put cream or oh, yeah. you know, you yeah. can put you can yeah. put some yeah. herbs Cilantro. with it, you know. Yeah. Some salt, some cayenne. Wow. So it can be and delicious. Even raw meat. Oh yeah, you can, you can mix raw meat with eggs. With eggs, with um, that's beef tartare. Yeah, the ground beef with the, yeah, the steak because, tartare. Yeah. Because I did hamburgers, yes. turkey hamburgers, but I cook them. Mm. So Save the yourself, food. yeah. Why bother? Yeah. It's fast food. For a picnic, just carry raw things with you, and you're good to go. Um, <laughs> 30 to 80 uh, percent. All cultures that were healthy, long lived, did not have disease, ate 30 to 80 percent of their calories from fat, largely saturated fat, whether it was coconut oil in the Polynesian islands or, or up in the, uh, in the northern regions, the mackerel, sardines, you know, fatty fish was a delicacy and, a, and the sacred part of the diet. Lard, tallow, um, ghee in India, butter, raw butter, cream in Switzerland before races. You know how they give people Gatorade now? They give the athletes raw cream. And um, they, you know, gave them raw cream and these were superb athletes, superb athletes. There's, there's not one single bottle of water in any of those machines outside. Oh, really? Oh. Well, the bathroom will have potable water. In no, it. it's okay. I mean, but I was just, you know. Isn't there water there? Yeah, yeah, but there was not one single bottle of water. Oh. There was everything else. Yeah. No water, oh, yeah. everything cans. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Healthy soda farm, yes. And almost no fats from polyunsaturated sources. No polyunsaturated fats, meaning corn oil, canola GMO. oil, GMO oil. Oils where you eat cold pressed oils where you press the seed and oil comes out those are the seed oils you you could eat but Sesame by and large yeah, by and large eat saturated fats uh, we've been sold a story we've been told a story 
that has resulted in one of the biggest epidemics of disease to eat low fat. And if you eat fats, eat oils. That has caused neurological disease, it's caused sensitivity to anything electrical, it's caused cancer, autoimmunity. Uh, your cell walls are made of fats. They have 40% fat, they have a lot of cholesterol, so eat your egg yolks. If you had a choice between egg whites and egg yolks, eat the yolks. What about coconut oil? Yes. You can have Very it. good, very and good. Sesame oil? Uh, cold pressed, cold yeah, pressed. Cold pressed. It's more monounsaturated, but it's good. But try and eat saturated fats. And olive oil as well. Huh? Olive oil, yes. But uh, again, olive oil, the sources of olive oil are very iffy in the United States. Find a good source and real cold pressed olive oil that's not been eaten. So that's hard to find and very, very expensive. So, is it supposed to be one of the best? Or? Which one? Um, Kirkland is not. Kirkland is, yeah, they've the tested it. Extra virgin is supposed to be good. The extra virgin. Extra virgin. Kirkland. Costco. Oh, yeah. yeah, Costco's, yeah. Uh, is, it, is, it, is it worth going to Costco just, yeah. it's is, very expensive. is it worth going to Costco just to get, no, <laughs> just the only oil in that, they have nice avocados many times, yes, that, yeah. that, yeah. that yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. toilet paper and olive oil, yeah. <laughs> and avocados, they have organic oh, they avocados, they actually, oh, Costco has the biggest organic selection of all big box stores, so, okay. considering yeah. checking them out, yeah, like if people are juicing, they're getting big bunches of organic carrots. The organic standards are changing a little bit, and they're sneaking in more poisons. But by and large, Costco sources well. It's organic, and the prices are decent. Okay, nearly equal amount of omega three and omega six fats. Uh, basically, what that means is the the more polyunsaturated, the linoleic acid and the linoleic acids about equal. And once we do the fats, I'll, I'll, I'll go through the chemistry of those. But just remember this. If you don't eat polyunsaturated oils, you're okay. And if you eat lots of fish, three servings of fish, fish, fish soup, fish heads, it uh, gives you the omega-3s for the week. And if you eat no vegetable oils, you're going to have about equal quantities of the threes and six in your diet. So don't worry about it too much. Just skip the polyunsaturated oils. All diets contain some salt, whether it was salt, dash, meat, milk, blood, or urine. Every culture fought wars. You know, Garum was salt. You know, Romans, they fought for salt. Salt was that precious. You have sodium inside your uh, extracellular space, and um, you need it. You need sodium to survive and the potassium on the inside of your cells. So you need good Greek combination of meats, green vegetables, and you need salt. And all cultures uh, thought salt to be sacred. They try and procured it from seaweed up in the mountains. They would burn the ashes of seaweed, and then you got a very salt and iodine-rich mineral powder that was given to Cretans or people, because Cretanism was rampant in the Swiss Alps 100, 200 years ago, and because they didn't have salt and iodine and other sea minerals. Worst case, just get some seawater, boil it, and eat three teaspoons or four tablespoons of seawater. Throw it into your salads and such. Uh, use your bones. You can use bones until they are completely macerated, you know, turn to pulp, and then you can compost them. So boil your bones. Never throw those chicken carcasses out. Never again. Never again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I heard you throw the, the chicken bones, everything, because they smell. Oh yeah. So I but, hurry to throw them Oh yeah, out. but if you boil it with some bay leaves and basil and and potpourri, some um, uh, rosemary and garlic and, and garlic, oh, 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 the whole house will fill up with the most wonderful. And what do you do with the bones after all? They'll get soft. You compost them. You feed them to your plants. You put them under the tomato mound. Okay. Yes. For very very good tomatoes. So the bones provide calcium, just as milk provides calcium, fish and fish bones provide calcium to cultures or civilizations that don't have access to cows. And the ones that have cows, you know, get their milk, their calcium from milk. But critical, critical to use your bones. 
And the 11th thing is all of this, even in the last four or five years, it sort of gets lost in the shuffle. People forget. I, I have repeated this over a, easily over 500 times now to different people. People forget. But you're not going to forget, and you're going to repeat this to your future generations. Because these laws, these are fundamental laws of nature and good health, and they get forgotten very fast. Yeah. What's, what's fascinating is I live in the senior housing and no one wants to cook 